Let's bring in now our panelists for the hour. We're joined by Matt Keelan, principal at the Vogel Group. Also with us, retired gunnery sergeant for the U.S. Marine Corps, Newsmax analyst Jesse Jane Duff, alongside the host of 13-Minute News Hour, Bobby Eberly. Panelists, welcome, and thank you so much for coming on. Matt, I'd like to start with you there. Crime, that's what we're talking about this morning in our third hour of National Report, whether it be an attempted assault against a sitting congressman or a fatal shooting of a police officer. What are your reactions this morning? Well, one thing, Lee, Lee Zeldin is a friend of mine. I know Lee. Uh, I've worked with him for years. Thank God he was okay. Uh, but this is part of the uh, summer of violence, as I've been calling it, that the left is trying to push on its uh, political opponents. You know, the fact that the governor had put his schedule up uh, doesn't look good for her campaign right now. It reminds me a lot of what's going on with the Supreme Court justices and their homes. And in almost every major city that's controlled by Democrats, crime is off the charts. And we should all pray for the men and women who are protecting us in the line of duty and particularly for the family of that fallen officer. Absolutely. And Jesse Jane Duff, I'll go to you on that. Obviously, um, the officer involved shooting there, but also, uh, again, back to the congressman uh, being attacked. The suspect uh, was charged, then released on his own recognizance. Um, your, your thoughts on that, how that situation was handled? Are you surprised that you're not hearing from more lawmakers? Hearing from more lawmakers? Obviously, the governor sent her tweet saying there's no place for this in New York and then moved on about the day. The governor of New York essentially had set a lot of this up by her inflammatory language that was trying to incite people to show up basically in an already heated movement, already in a heated gesture. She incited it with her own rhetoric, getting the schedule out there, her supporters making the uh, language of white extremism and all the other extremism that they label the conservatives. And yet then for her to come back, it's almost a, week and, a wink and a nod, like we saw from the White House, when the Supreme Court justices were now being surrounded at their homes with protesters. And we cannot forget that there was a failed attempt upon Justice Kavanaugh's life. So here, this was also a failed attempt on Lee's life, Senator Lee, and yet, uh, Congressman Lee, and yet we're looking at this going, wait a minute. The guy was literally released and not detained after an attempted murder. This goes to prove the point that New York's Democratic legislators and their governor are out of control or do not have the safety of their citizens in mind. If anything, this should wake up every New York voter who they want as governor, and it cannot be someone who turns a wink and a nod and all but sets it up for play. Bobby, we're just several months away from the November midterm elections. Is now the time for some candidates to really tone down the rhetoric against their opponents? Well, when you do something like Hochul did as far as basically saying, here's the guy and what they're having is not a campaign event. It's an extremist rally, as Jesse Jane was saying. That is getting people fired up and encouraging the exact actions that we saw on that stage. And it's happening all across the country. What I would encourage candidates to do, especially on, on the right, is to make this an issue. Make this an issue that we need safe communities, that this bail reform, Lee Zeldin called the shot. He called the shot that this person would be immediately released, and that's exactly what happened. <clears throat> Here in Fort Bend County, just neighboring Harris County with this Houston, there have been over 100 people killed on people let out on bail. This has to be addressed because we see the violence against cops. We see the violence against ordinary citizens from people that should be in jail. Lee Zeldin was reportedly talking about bail reform around Absolutely. the time of the attack. Uh, talk about irony there. Panelists, if you could stay with us. The committee says it's planning to uh, issue more subpoenas for testimony. They're going to be spending the month of August gathering more evidence going forward. They say separate se several Secret Service members have obtained legal counsel. They expect that they may testify. Those hearings will resume in September. Will Americans be tuning in? We'll have to wait and see. Kilmeny Ducart, though, with the very latest. Kilmeny, thank you. We'll bring back in our panelists, Matt Keelan, Jesse Jane Duff, and Bobby Eberly. Matt Keelan, I'll go to you. As we listen to Kilmeny's report, did something stand out to you that might resonate with the American public that they didn't know before? Well, to your point, if a tree falls in the forest and no one hears it fall, did it really fall? I mean, the American public is tuning out these January 6th hearings. They're much more concerned with the price of gas, the price of meat, 
not being able to take vacations. And uh, a lot of people, particularly of the Republican side, keep waiting for the subpoena to go out to Nancy Pelosi to ask, when you were offered the National Guard, why did you turn it down? I'll go to uh, Bobby Eberly on this. Uh, and again, a, a question I continue to ask. Um, you have, holding your hearings is a choice by the committee. They're able to do so. But um, when you get to the paramount of the findings, is there a criminal referral at this time? Fact, the answer is no. Then what are you doing? Right. Yeah, absolutely. What stood out to me in that report was that stories are not facts. And they're just bringing in people to to push Trump into a, put him into a place where he they can either charge him, which, like you said, there's nothing that's come up that's even remotely chargeable, and to discredit him from running again. That's the whole objective here. But stories aren't facts, and people don't care what's going on here. It doesn't register on anyone's radar screen as we approach the midterm elections. I mean, people are consider they care about the economy, border security, inflation, Biden's capacity to do the job. They're worried about that. They're worried about children in schools. This does not even register, and yet the Democrats push it because they have nothing else on the agenda. All right, time now to unpack a very busy news week. We'll bring back our panelists, Matt Keelan, Jessica Jane Duff, and Bobby Eberly, uh, if we can. Matt, we'll start with you. And this political stunt, what some are calling a political stunt here, when 17 Democratic lawmakers were arrested during an abortion rights protest, Congresswoman Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez caught on camera in what appeared to be faking handcuffs. She says she wasn't faking, tweeting, quote, no faking here, putting your hands behind your back is best practice when detained handcuffed or not, to avoid escalating charges like resisting arrest. But again, she was taken away with another woman to her left with her hands not behind her back. Um, Matt Keelan, your thoughts on this whole situation? Well, this was all set up by a Soros-funded progressive group from the start. It was coordinated between these members of Congress. There was a live camera streaming it. Uh, AOC is one of the best political promoters uh, out there on the progressive left. That's how she got elected to Congress in the first place. She knew exactly what she was doing. ABC and some other outlets fell for it. And, uh, it, you know, it's just a shame that these people continue to do this stuff. Look at those cops that are responding to this. Meanwhile, there's protesters at the Supreme Court justices' houses threatening their lives. Yeah. So they're wasting time with uh, a political show. You know, Jesse Jane, what happened to that phrase, you know, hands where I can see them? Right? It, does that not apply in this situation? Uh, the hands are good. Yeah, well, Casio Cortez obviously has an agenda, and this isn't the first time that she has pulled this stunt uh, to reinforce that, yes, she does have organizational help when she pulled this off. She essentially had sat in Nancy Pelosi's office uh, with a Green Deal support group, and they are Soros funded. These are the Marxist leftist people that are definitely trying to bring socialism to America. She, had, she has proclaimed herself to be a socialist. And when her protesters were in the Capitol taking over offices, congregating in the hallways, and not one was arrested. In fact, they were celebrated by the Democratic leadership, including Stanley Hoyer. They were commended for their speaking out for Green New Deal and green initiatives. They bow down to this left exertion. We can mock Ocasio-Cortez as much as we want, but we need to remember she okay. is... Okay, uh, just uh, on pause really quick. Uh, here's Lee Zeldin speaking. People didn't instantly jump on him the way that they did. There was probably the next group of seven, eight, nine, ten who would have uh, done it. There were a lot of people who reacted very smartly, and I'm, I'm very proud of that response and what was a really difficult moment. Did you have to change any of your security protocol today? Is this experience any different or, or any of your logistics? To yes, all security for all events for the remainder of the campaign is moving that up. That's something that started this morning. This is our second rally of the day. Uh, we just came from Seneca, where there was an increased law enforcement presence, uh, and that will be sustained for a number of days. Uh, how do you respond to those that look at what happened and the fact that they were uh, released shortly after this incident? And my yeah. All right. 
Um, response to that, too, that was one of those moments, Congressman Lee Zeldin, again, at that event. Uh, obviously, this has been somewhat of a contentious moment here of how security is handled and how responses are handled from Democratic leaders, Republican leaders. We've had several congressional leaders come on today talking about this and what could have been an, uh, an even worse situation, Bobby. Yeah, absolutely. And, it, you know, this is the M.O. This is a there's a track record of this. We even see this with conservative speakers on college campuses where they want to shut down conservative voices by threatening <clears throat> violence, actual violence, because they say the words that a conservative will say are somehow violent in and of themselves. That's what Hochul was basically promoting when she was getting people out to this rally, that this was right wing extremism. It's, it's just absolutely nuts. But that's what they say. They can't debate. So they want to shut us down, and they do that by making us appear to be a threat. That way, actual violence is condoned. They allow it. It's just ridiculous. And on Ocasio-Cortez, she's done some crazy things, but that one is just nuts. I love the Babylon Bee headline that says, she's still in those invisible handcuffs because they can't find the invisible key. I mean, it's, <laughs> just, it's just ridiculous what she's doing, and, and hopefully people will see it for what it is. Yeah, a little humor always from the Babylon yeah. Bee. All right, friends, thanks again for tuning in. I really appreciate it. And before you go, please hit that subscribe button above. Once you do, tell your friends, share it, spread the word about the 13-minute news hour so we can keep growing. And for more great content, check out these videos right here, and I'll see you next time.